Hi, my name's Jackie Klein, and in this series we're going to be taking a close look at what's called performance art, exploring five different ways in which we might encounter it inside and sometimes outside the museum. We'll also be trying to answer questions like, why are these people dancing in a museum? Why am I allowed to touch this? And is this really art? Up until now, we focused on the art world, and specifically the art museum. But art and performance have always been connected with wider society. We're used to artists commenting on political and social issues, but can art really change society? Let's hear from one of the most active artists in the field, Tanya Bruguera, who we saw in episode one. Life is much more intense than anything you can see in a museum, and things are happening in the streets that are really offensive. What artists do is kind of bring that into a more secluded and kind of a specific moment to think about it. Since performance exploded in the 60s, artists have created all sorts of actions that respond to or are part of activist movements. This engagement with life outside the gallery continues today. In 2015, artists Anish Kapoor and Ai Weiwei walked across London in solidarity with refugees around the world. This is not a demonstration, it's a war. We are two, two artists, I think I, we want to remember that. And in some ways, artists are um, both deeply relevant and also completely irrelevant. And I think that irrelevance matters. The, the artist is a kind of fool, you know, doing often ridiculous acts that sometimes may have a report. Artists can also adopt different personas to make their statements about the world. For example, in the 1980s, the Gorilla Girls started wearing costumes as part of their visual identity as they tried to tackle inequality in the art world. What's very good about our image is that when you look at our masks, you think of what we stand for. And we stand for the conscience of the art world. And we feel that there, there is underrepresentation of women and minorities. And when you see our logo, basically, when you see our face, that's what we stand for, and it's not personal. Other artists have taken a more participatory approach, creating situations that allow the audience to think about a particular burning issue. Each projection has in front of it a person sitting at a computer. That person is transcribing their personal narrative as they write themselves into history. I should say very clearly, this is actually not a project about aging. This is a project about discrimination and inequality. The image evolved over six months of people talking. So it's a truly participatory work, and my role as an artist is to help facilitate the process, but it's really not my work. Sometimes artists try to make an impact by creating art in public spaces. Here's the Danish artist Olafur Eliasson, who took 12 blocks of ice cast off the Greenland coast to highlight the effects of global warming. Det tænker man jo ikke egentlig over, men faktisk tror jeg en af de store spørgsmål og udfordringer ved, ved klimaproblematikken, det er jo, at vi ved det godt alt sammen. Vi ved, der er ikke nogen, der ikke ved, hvad det her handler om. Men det er enormt svært at forholde sig til det, fordi det er så abstrakt. Det er helt vildt hurtigt. Ikke? Det er jo så næsten skræmmende, fordi jeg, jeg vil jo gerne have det bare her i nogle dage. Ikke? Og jeg håber ikke, at øh, altså jeg håber ikke, det er væk i løbet af en nat. So, can art change society? Maybe not by itself, but these examples show how artists have found different ways of engaging with social issues, either by changing the nature of the museum space or bringing political issues into the public space. I hope these five short films have given you something to think about and maybe some tools for helping you to look at and enjoy performance art, a radical type of active art that pushes the body, the art object, the museum, and ultimately us, the audience, to the very limits of human experience. Thanks for watching.